Hi folks and welcome back to another Eagle Moss Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review This time featuring issue 102 We have the Klingon D5 Battle Cruiser So let's put this model to one side And let's see what goodies lay inside the magazine first off So interesting graphic Magazine a little bit crumpled But you know that can happen on interstellar travel So we have class D5 In operation 22nd century Max speed warp 6 and length 155 meters. So she could outrun the Enterprise. So lovely graphic as I said. And uh, definitely uh, icons of Klingon's design in a lot of places on this uh, actual ship. So let's see what goodies lay inside shall we. So we have our four sections, Klingon D5 class battlecruiser, designing the ship, Klingon history, and on-screen appearances. So we have our atypical Klingon grasping onto the wings mounting system here. Hopefully it does grasp the ship. Um, additional information, photon torpedoes, disruptors, and we have some close-up uh, of the graphics here as well. And uh, lovely profile actually. Means business, I like it. Now that's a nice graphic, I must admit. Touché, graphic artists. Um, looming out of the darkness of space, ready to pounce on an, any unsuspecting victim. The D5 battlecruiser's sinister outline brought fear into the hearts of many unfortunates enough to come across one of these deadly warships. The D5 was fast and armed to the teeth with disruptors and photon torpedo launchers. Yes, she had, she had a mean streak about her. So the D5 class was the principal warship of the Klingon Imperial Fleet during the latter half of the 22nd century. So that's a lovely belly shot, isn't it? Nice wing of them. And you can see a very similar shot here. <laughs> now you get the sense of scale between the Enterprise and the D5 there as well. So grappling with the Klingons. Yeah. Those Klingons are up to all sorts of shenanigans through uh, Enterprise, aren't they? And hopefully, those shenanigans will continue through Star Trek Discovery. Here's the ship profile. So we have the multi-spectral sensors on the um, dorsal side, main bridge where you'd expect it to be. Resupply conduit or cargo hatch if you're not so fancy. Uh, disruptor cannons, uh, twin disruptor cannon turret, photon torpedo launcher where you would expect it to be. Um, and again, here's one that was modified to carry eight barrel shaped containers in two rows of four. So good to see that it could be actually modified as well. So multi-purpose in some aspects. So designing the ship, obviously, I think it bears a lot of his hallmarks as well. So this is another one of John Eve's great designs. We actually see it here in that kind of cargo um, form factor. So the script called for a Klingon ship that could haul deuterium, but Johnny's figured that all Klingon ships were designed for combat. And I would subscribe to that. Uh, so he came up with this hybrid version that could also serve as a battle cruiser and would later appear without the tanks as well. So definitely you have the form factor of the Klingons there uh, with the bow bridge, you know, the neck, the wings, the uh, wingtip nacelles and that kind of configuration. The colour palette, you know, the intakes and everything like that as well. So it's very hard to kind of rewind time um, when we have a look at like, you know, the Katinga, the uh, Vorcha, Negvar, Bird of Praise and, you know, having to kind of stand up to those icons. It's a tough call. So here we have a little bit on Klingon history. So again, from Broken Bow, First episode, we were introduced to Klingons straight away. And um, yeah, they are a formidable and icon of an enemy in Star Trek lore. And uh, yeah, they've been the center of a lot of conversations in relation to Star Trek Discovery as well. So we have good bit of, a good bit on Klingon history. But again, this is a Starships magazine, so I don't really care in this publication to find out about Klingon history. Tell me about the history of Klingon ships or design or whatever or more about the design. Come up with some lore. But um, 
you know, I've said that before. We had a previous piece on Deep Space Nine and Bajor and stuff like that as well. Ah. And actually, here we have another one of these flyers. Um, so I, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. But anyway, we'll wrap up with this uh, magazine now. Uh, issue 103, we have the Vidian warship from Voyager. Interesting ship. Uh, looking forward to that as well. So let's close out in the back graphic and let's have a look at this model, shall we? So model time, model shenanigans. Let's take her out of the box. And let's actually have a look at the ship, shall we? Oh, it's very light, but it's quite big actually. And just FYI, I have 4113A slash A Klingon D5 Battlecruiser. Let's put the package into one side and let's have a look at this model. So here is the D5 Battlecruiser. Um, it has that distinctive light, lighter green slash metallic sheen to it that we've seen on other um, Enterprise era um, ships. Now, there's a lot of sculpting. Um, like these support bars and the underslung uh, um, blah, 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 turret. She's a little bit kinked here. But I think, I don't know, I'm sure that we could maybe... Hmm, yeah, maybe we could tweak that um, a little bit better. But I won't do it on screen for fear of uh, utter, utter failure. But... Um, you could just make out, I think on camera, see there's a kind of tonality um, on the actual overall paint that you can actually see the underlying pattern here. Um, and on the wings as well, those kind of feathers. Um, that's actually quite nice, very subtle. So it's kind of like just a shade or two lighter given that detail. Um, we have different paint apps going down the neck. So we have the intake and some other kind of a little bit yellow detailing just under there as well and just splashes of red and yellow so like the impulse the warp nacelle as well and that kind of cowling uh, frame is actually quite nice too as regards to the sculpt there's a lot of detailing on this so the warps the warp nacelles going down even more support bars on the uh, not the leading edge but the aft edge of the wings we have our what do they call that conduit <laughs> or hatch detailing in there a lot of detailing going down the actual ventral section as well it's actually quite nice i must admit here we have the weapon the photon torpedo the kind of the skull kind of gets a little soft just around here but nothing too crazy you still get the detail but it just i don't know it's like it reminds me of the dorsal section of Voyager. I always found the detailing um, a little bit soft on that. And uh, there we have the main kind of command section, bridge section there as well. So we have that patterning on the hull going along all those kind of large surfaces. There isn't any patterning on these sections here, but uh, there really wouldn't be any need for that. But um, that's a nice model actually. And it's actually quite big. But, you know, looking at the rest of the Klingon ships, they're generally rather big as well. Because most of the Klingon ships that we've seen, they're not massive bar the Negvar. So, again, and there's a lot of potential to show a lot of detailing on these. And generally, Eagle Moss does pull off a very good uh, representation of the Klingon ships. Um, looking at the aft section here actually quite nice i like these little design pieces on the ends here as well i'm not sure was that not painted could be wrong i have to check that after the fact but um let's actually have a look at the ship in uh mounted and let's compare it to a ship in the line just to get a sense of scale as well so the mounting on this is actually quite nice and um, those arms go right down over the wings they're not too tight and the mount actually went into the base without any major issues as well. It's more flat. And I found the model quite balanced as well. So you have metal here. And then plastic on the bottom. I, I believe. Hang on. I just need to check that. Yeah. like That's, that's all die cast there. And then the back here is metal. So it's a little bit 
just ever so slightly front heavy. So that benefits the slightly longer arms over the wings as well. So let's compare two ship on the line so we can get a sense of scale. Why not dust off the Klingon Raptor? You can definitely see a lot of design elements in here sharing between the two of them. And um, I like the difference in... It's not even difference. There's a lot of commonality in the design. But uh, just even the way those wings are arched on the Raptor versus the D5. Um, again, both unmistakably cling on two different color palettes in the hull uh, painting. But um, yeah, two very complementary pieces here. And both from Enterprise and both from Johnny's. So um, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up on that review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And again, folks, thanks for your support in watching, commenting, liking, subscribing uh, to these videos and uh, my channel. And let me know in the comments below what you thought of uh, issue 102, isn't it? I think it's 102. I believe it's 102. It is 102. I've just confirmed. My sources tell me. Um, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy and goodbye. Yeah.